so it's it's all full of challenges every day there are a lot of challenges in terms of scalability in terms of um, hiring people so as 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 uh, you know your team comes in like uh, i am off so uh, one of the biggest challenge is uh, about hiring the devops people as i was telling so people are very costly and i don't know what is happening to the world welcome to our series entitled the i am podcast a podcast about innovation business and most importantly people in this series we'll be talking to founders executives and various experts about their vision challenges best practices and lessons learned throughout their journey let's get started Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Today I have the pleasure of being joined by the founder and CEO at Illumnus, Akash Deep Singhal. Hello Akash, how are you? Hello, May. Hello everyone. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for your time and welcome to the I am podcast. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. We are so glad Uh, to see you, to hear from you, and we want to learn more about your product. You know the development, the market, and as well as your personal journey, of course. Okay, we are all ready. Let's get started. Let's say you are in front of investors. So, how would you pitch your product? Oh my God, that's a tough question to ask. But yeah, I would like to answer that. So. Um, basically we are changing the way how education is experienced in schools so if you see the traditional manner in which the classroom used to occur so it is not exactly very different even after the covid like uh, if you ask 90% of the people they understand online education means live classes that happen on zoom or google classroom and i guess it is not this not very different in india or singapore or in us like most of the places people understand like that but if you really see schooling consists of much more other aspects apart from just the classes or the physical classes or the live classes there are you know every day attendances every day management or if you see there are uh, you know sharing of the content maybe physical or maybe digital content and after that analysis of that sharing daily homeworks assignment quizzes examinations and anal- analysis of that and informing parents back in back at home and even after that like uh, to make sure that how student can grow right and all of these things are remaining amiss <clears throat> i'm sorry are remaining amiss in these times so we um, how we are to you know are changing the way so we are centralizing the entire equation rather than making them use 10 different platforms you know different platforms which do not talk to each other and data is redundant second Uh, we don't make them use some complicated, uh, outdated softwares. So it is very overwhelming uh, if you say uh, as a teacher. So um, uh, we are making it simplified and we are making it collaborative because there are teachers, there are students, there are parents and administration, and there are all separated. And we are trying to bring back the communication on the on the game. So yeah, that's about us. Okay, wow. Your company was founded before the pandemic, 2018. So, did you what what is your vision? I mean, how did this idea came about? Can you talk to us about the education space in India or what do you see in the market in the society? Ah, uh, it it's actually come it goes back to my curiosity. First of all, um Uh, you know when i was growing up when i was in school i was from a very small city i did not know what to do like most of the people i guess some of them are lucky enough i guess so um, i was but one thing about me was i was very curious about things like why things happen why you know this happened that happened so because of that curiosity i wanted to uh, to say that um, uh, you know people suggested that you should go to some top notch institution i did not know what that mean what iv schools meant so i studied about it and i got that okay we should prepare for je and uh, you know go to iits like in india iits are the you know best institution in indian institute of technologies so these are the technological institutions i went to the best of them the best of uh, best one of them so iit bombay uh, over there my journey started about you know meeting with amazing people out there and we had like very amazing community of entrepreneurs as well so that uh give get you know gave me the boost for the entrepreneurship but apart from that into this particular idea how i started working into this particular idea so it began with uh i saw a very amazing thing used over there so that was moodle 
I mean, Moodle is very common thing today. But at that time, it was something very new to us. And um, it was very different sort of a classroom. Like it was sort of a flipped classroom. So teachers used to give us the materials to study over there or watch the videos over there. And um, we would come to the classroom and discuss about all these uh, aspects. And that's how it was pretty amazing. And I saw when I used to look at other universities or other schools, it was not the kind of infrastructure over there. Because to set up Moodle, we needed a very high tech, um, you know, good, 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 de decent tech team uh, to set it up at, you know, amazing uh, IT infrastructure over there. And schools can't even set up the websites uh, most of the times. So it, it was not easy for them. So I wanted to make it easy for them to set it up. And um, that's when I started uh, researching and sitting with the teachers, students, like how about if you if, if we could bring you one-stop solution for your learning and teaching. And at that time, LMS was not a uh, known term. We were thinking a bit ahead of it. Like, and when I say we, so I, my couple of colleagues, uh, and my, like right now, uh, my, you know, my co-founder as well as my wife. So, yeah. So the, then we started researching. And after six years of uh, on and off research, we finally started in 2018. And that was, yes, before COVID. But somehow COVID happened and people started accepting our, our, our vision and um, our thing. So it is yet to be fulfilled. Like it is far, far from what we have imagined. But yes, we are going in the right direction, I guess. Yeah. One step at a time. That's right. That's right. And this innovative approach is really working. Yes, we can all relate to that. And okay, you talked to us about your co-founders. Your wife is also working in this company. Yeah, I come from the technical background. She is from the business background. Oh, I see. Okay, that adds it all. Okay, so how, how does that work? What are the challenges or is it a big advantage? Um, there are a lot of challenges, but advantages as well. Because um, because for past six years, we've been together. And apart from that, uh, if, if she was in a different company, I was in a different company, we would like be meeting only at the night and uh, you know separate in the morning but today you know in these times it is like almost 24 hours we are together and uh, it is very intertwined um, there are challenges as well because uh, uh, when you're part of so you know how you know entrepreneurship is how much time or efforts it could take in how much energy it could take in and uh, we don't get a lot of time for ourselves but somehow mm -hmm. being at you know people of adventure we try to get out of the zone and, um, you know, travel around. So, yeah, there are pros and cons. <laughs> right. Okay. This startup, you just successfully raised, right, over $58,000 via crowdfunding. So why did you choose to crowdfund instead of the traditional VC funding? Okay. So when it, it's not I am opposed to VC fund. But um, when VC comes in, they come with a lot of experience in one domain, but and there is only one VC. But when you go to the crowd, so it's like it is validation of the idea that, OK, um, they're putting uh, money as a skin in the game and they are trying to help us out. You know, there are people from all around the world and now they are, OK, Akash, would you be willing to um, expand to, South, you know, South Africa? I said, why not? Like, I mean, they are opening up the possibilities. There are business development people, or there are investors from uh, Singapore. There are um, you know people people from Malaysia that okay, I can connect you to, to this guy. This is a very amazing coder, and uh, would you like to you know get him on the team? I mean that that opens up the possibility. It's not just about the money, but it's about the people who come together to with your vision and uh, see the vision and uh, fulfill that um, uh, every day in day out. So yeah, that's the great. That's the important part of it. Wow, I mean, bringing this innovative approach in Africa, we know the status there, right? That's really would create a big impact. And yeah, sorry, we hope so. yeah, talk to us about your product. MVP, how's the MVP? How did you, well, how's the first version? Okay, so uh, now it's like seven or eight versions already, you know, have come out. So it's, again, as I said, like it's a centralized, simplified and collaborative software, which brings together teachers, students, parents, and administration all together on, at one place. And uh, they can use it from anywhere, from any device, like, you know, it may be uh, Android, iOS, or any web. 
so it is all integrated and they don't have to worry about the setup they don't have to worry about um, you know any technology or anything it is just like any app so it is that simple and um, for example when a school opens up if you are asking me like how any new school comes up okay. so any new any new new school can come up by directly signing up on our website and um, like our, our, our web app and over there itself it is just a very simple process in 30 seconds you can just onboard yourself as a school and you can invite your teachers and students and bam you they they can they can uh, access the courses whichever they are teaching in in the physical classroom and uh, they can uh, as a student they can uh, access the courses whichever they are studying in and over there it is just like a whatsapp group kind of thing over there um, uh, they can collaborate as a group they can it's like slack for education so yeah very collaborative you provide seamless experience to all three stakeholders students administrators teachers but as a parent as well because uh, when you are uh, at, at home so uh, pandemic i mean right now students are studying at home but when they go out so they don't exactly understand that you know parents are waiting for uh, parent teacher meetings that happen one once in a couple of months and they don't exactly understand that okay what is my kid doing so over there if if they get a app and you could just you know open it once a day and you could see that okay what is his prog- his or her progress going on in the classroom how he is like matching up with other other kids or, and uh, how is um, is he completing the homework is he up to the date with the assignments so he can't exactly you know fool you around or uh, you could actually be involved in the progress so yes uh, that is very uh, involving kind of approach how many universities how many schools are using this product right now so right now we are more than uh, uh, you know 130 clients over here and um, from different part of the world 130 and, uh, 130 and there there are some small schools there are some big schools there are some big groups as well for example one of the groups we are working with so they are these are based in bangalore so there are like um, a group of seven schools and 5000 students and uh, they have seen like uh, if i if i talk about the some good parts so they used to have some 15 um, a team of 15 people who would send the, the content across the schools and like content team and they, they these guys would like you know do every day in day out all of these 30 days uh, of the month and now there is uh, you know reduction of all the 14 people only one one person looks at the sharing of the content and that to only once in a week because they can share post multiple content in multiple groups like standard and subject groups and uh, they can schedule it so they would sit on friday and all the for the next week it is done for all the schools at work from one place so that is the kind of power it is happening uh, in case of assignments previously you know um, uh, it was very difficult to manage for them because uh, in case of google classroom for example they were using previously it is just a one one group right after that there is no top level management there no administrative kind of management from our place uh, it is centralized so uh, from one place they could share the assignment from one place and it will go in different uh, institutions in different standards and from there itself there are submissions and over there teacher should annotate and uh, share, submit the copy back to the parents so parents are so happy that okay in the pandemic when most of the people most of the uh, schools are not being able to uh, cater to the best of their educational uh, activities wherein they could do it in the physical format but these guys are doing much better than the physical ones so super awesome like that that um, uh, wakes up us wakes us up in the morning and uh, you know come to the office and uh, work as a team to make make their experiences better so, so yeah great great so it impacts their productivity exactly wow. exactly can you give me like a customer feedback how did it help how did your product help yeah for sure so uh, for example this was the story of um, previously i was telling about the story of the bank uh, school group premier school group in bangalore that is named as specialis group Uh, and um, as i said like 50 people to one person so so cost reduction as well as uh, so so they could do in the you know people can actually focus on the better things actually focus on the analytics so that which student is lagging behind what are the materials they they want 
in future by the way we are we are, we will be coming up with ai our own ai so that we could recommend that okay this guy is lagging behind and this guy is going ahead so this guy should be given this material this guy should be given this material so automatically system generating the materials for these these people maybe study content or the question papers or you know set of questions so tomorrow we'll be you know in future we are we are going to work on that but today um, if i tell you one another uh, success story so one is a group in afghanistan so you know how unfortunate the situation has been in past few months in case of afghanistan with the taliban thing right and the parents are scattered here and there and um, you know with kids in different countries but their education is being able to you know they are they are being able to continue that because of the platform because uh, even if the if the if the teacher is uh, right now in pakistan or they have moved to maybe southeast but um, they are being able to teach from there and students are being able to learn there so it's not about the physical constraint they have to be in and um, so yeah studies are going on and uh, every day there are more than 5000 contents being shared on the platform so that is the beauty of it that is the beauty of it that it is Im- making impact um, it is not just about the money i mean it is far beyond i mean money is obviously required finances are obviously required to run a business and um, everything is there but it's far beyond that it is about the purpose wherein uh, you know people are being able to continue the study where in they could not and future is much brighter than this so yeah okay do you have a crazy story like on your journey like this startup oh a lot of crazy stories actually we are um, okay so we are a moving startup <laughs> so we, we 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 as people are like you know whoever you know with the co-founders and other team members so we were like travel travel people we would you know go go to the places and work from there and um, however in covid everyone is like you know everyone is traveling around and walking from mountains walking from different places but before that as well like um, we were very much into travel so i myself have been a advanced mountaineer Uh, uh with professional courses in himalayas uh, like multiple months many months in himalayas very extreme conditions so um i used to be always like okay i, I mean if i get into the startup i was always feared that uh, i would lose this particular part of my life wherein i would not have to you know could not go in mountains mm-hmm. back so um, uh we uh, did not stop that actually when we started we after that we are even traveling more so last year actually last to last year we went to uh, himachal himachal pradesh manali like a part of it so we worked from there for a month more than a month and we went to like um, uh, very remote place from there just like you know how pink floyd or beatles would do so mm-hmm. very creative kind of uh, place very creative kind of uh, environment and uh, a productivity if you say you know uh, what we could achieve in four five months we achieved in one month so that is the kind of craziness and we traveled a lot so <laughs> so the in 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 month of march this year march 2021 we went to uh, northeast uh, india so meghalaya um, and uh, other you know assam meghalaya all these places and uh, so that's how we get to connect with nature as well as the technology i mean these two things are very important in in our life we can't just go beyond technology and go beyond um, you know finances and all of that so we need to stay connected with our mother earth and uh, i mean that is my perspective my look out our team our teams look out but yeah we think that that should be that should not be forgotten sustainable mm. development well, yes yes wow it, it's funny like you thought okay the uh, building this startup will hinder you to travel but it led you to more traveling to more travels <laughs> yes Okay. He talked about the challenges. Where does the challenge lies? So don't even remind me of that. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was uh, uh, when I was going to marry, I mean, this was early this year, you know, mid of this year itself. So when I was uh, about to get married, the biggest biggest uh, freaking uh, <laughs> I would get you know nightmares that what if I had to you know when I'm in the altar and I, I get a call that okay server has problems so you know there are a lot of traffic and uh, now we need a so it's it's all full of challenges every day there are a lot of challenges in terms of scalability in terms of um, hiring people so as 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 uh, you know your team comes in like uh, I'm ops 
so one of the biggest challenge is uh, about hiring the devops people as i was telling so people are very costly and i don't know what is happening to the world <laughs> uh, we can <can't... laughs> valuations are crazy companies are throwing a lot of money but yes uh, we it is it is bit hard to um, get amazing people in the decent salary so uh, for us it is it becomes difficult at hiring part hiring part and um, then when it comes to the scalability you need very specified or uh, very uh, known people to work on those areas yeah the challenges of like example do you have to ask for permission to the government or about the data that you're going to collect and to the cloud are there challenges yes 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 yes, yes. so i every place you know different places or different geographies have different uh, compliance issues mm. so when if you for example if you if you are working in europe Europe has different like GDPR compliance very strictly strict policy about that. If you are into let's say Indian, if you if you are working with Indian government, so they would say that okay, our data should not go out in the cloud and your cloud, and it should be like completely within us, out uh, completely with us. So uh, that is that is for sure the challenge. Like every time that happens, so DevOps has a has its own challenges, and uh, startup has its own like every day. <laughs> Right, and well, that compliance issue can also be handled by your DevOps team. Yeah, uh, if it is technical compliance, yes, for sure. Mm. Okay, so important lessons that you have learned throughout your startup journey. So, start with small, uh, and then you know go grow in eccentric circles. So maybe you know create monopoly at the very small phase. For example, you don't need to be a, um, a small service in the bigger market. Rather, you need to be a you know choose a market and uh, create an impact over there. For example, Facebook or, or or Google. So they did not start as like you know all these services like so many services. Facebook started with ten uh, thousand people in Harvard, and it reached to seventy percent of the population within just in just ten days, right? Like zero to seventy percent of the population, seven thousand people in just ten days, and after that they could uh, double down on that strategy. So you need to start small and work on the limited target. Second is you. I mean, there is a lot of hype in the market. There are a lot of um, valuation game in the market. But you should. I mean, every everyone has their own game, but I personally have figured out that value is what I like. So we're in. Um, You don't get be pulled by valuation and like um, investors, VCs. I mean, VCs and exits are something which are optional thing. You need to find your customer, solve the value. I mean, solve for their problem and find that space, find that vacuum wherein you can actually create the value. And when they pay for it, they you get the revenue. I mean, it is a, it is a, it sounds like a very traditional old uncle kind of a business. But yes, that is what sustainable. I mean, that is what has driven the humanity and the capitalism hand in hand, and valuation and all these things are ups and downs. And I mean, those will go. I mean, you should you should not look at that. Hmm. So I guess these two and third thing is people are the most important. I mean, I don't need to tell that, but yes, you can't go farther without people. So uh, if you don't need it. Team of you know 100 people. You need a team of let's say two people. Two people are fine, but these guys should be very much motivated and very much should be you know in the ownership of that whatever they they are holding. Let's say I am in the I am into tech and my wife or Gauri is into uh, my co-founder is into non-tech. So she's taking care of the entire responsibility of the non-tech. I don't have to worry about while I'm coding that okay, our sales uh, will happen or not. If you could offer a first-time entrepreneur. One piece of advice: any entrepreneurial hack or any tip, best practice. Um, it could be learned in. It cannot be learned in books. It can, you know, definitely some idea can be gotten from, um, you know, watching videos or, or reading books. But certainly, no business school or no book or no people can actually teach you business. You, it is a hard road that you have to get your fingers burnt, get your skin in the game to actually learn it. but you don't really need to jump okay i need to start my something of my own and just you know start in the game i mean until you find something which is like for which you are really really passionate about 
mm-hmm. and uh, the passion is something which is not which might not be on the day one and um, there are like a lot of times as 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 paul gram said says says that it might come in the later stages like you need you start working on something and there are like twitter was side project uh, slack was side project right jira mm-hmm. confluence so that was side project so a lot of um, amazing things were side projects and not the main thing and um, yeah those grew so you won't really know but uh, the important thing is not just jump into the thing that okay i want to start my own rather find the real mission into it and understand that it is going to be a very excruciating journey it is not it is it is going to take your heart and soul and <laughs> blood and sweat and everything and whatever you could imagine everything is gone so yes you need to be prepared you need to think from a long long exactly that is why we travel actually we, we don't stop traveling because in my first startup i was like uh, within 8 months i within first eight months i was like so gone so much um, uh, drained out so much um, i i did not have energy at the end of the eight, eight months that okay because i poured myself all in for these eight months no sunday no saturday you know um, uh, 18 hours straight but that is not how it is it is a long term game you can't just go on like this ultimately you're human right you you should not uh, leave things behind you there are like a lot of things for example for me travel is very important thing music is important thing blockchain is important thing so you should not leave the touch because uh, some day you might regret that okay when things are not going right that i l- left those things i sacrificed those things and uh, the in the best scenario you should not it should never feel that you made any sacrifices mm. because that's not how things work right so yeah. work hard but don't forget to rest or you know people uh things that matter <laughs> exactly okay what's the road ahead like for illness okay so t- till now it was um, uh, you know working with close number of clients a uh, very very limited number of clients and um, creating impact for them creating value for them so that uh, they actually see the value and they can actually pay us that okay they don't mind paying us and now uh, it's not something that we have to chase the clients to 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 get the money right so because they they are happy with our services and uh, we get the check at the right day on the right day even before that so that's that's a great achievement and we get accolades every day in job so now road road ahead is to scale that part and uh, i guess hyperscale is not something that okay might happen tomorrow but yeah in the in the future if we see so we are going to capture one institute at a time and um, you know if if you think of crm or sales crm so hubspot is hubspot is something um, is one of the top choices so just like that when it comes to the education so one thing should be like uh, you know when when alex pure alumna said it solves everything for us it solves the learning and teaching for us and then after in different domains let's say management let's say you know one suit for all so yeah that's how product as well as say you know product as well as client acquisition goes hand in hand all right okay now this is the last question for this session how would you okay fill this statement i am akash your blank founder how would you like to be remembered as a founder um passionate down to earth i don't know like i i i i i i i i don't like putting any adjectives adjectives to myself but yeah it could be passion uh, filled with uh, humanity i mean that's nature connected i don't know so wow. you fill in the blanks passionate and what passionate and humanity <laughs> yes i mean passion and humanity are two things that connects me so i don't know what to fill in the blanks but yeah mm. hashtag okay, well, that's good Okay. Well, we hope that you continue your passion and continue to create an impact especially in the ed tech world, in the ed tech space. All the best to Illumnus. Thank you so much, May. It was really nice connecting with you. This podcast is powered by imops.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CI/CD process with imops.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.imops.io and get a DevOps team Make sure to check out www.imops.io if you want to know more about us. Subscribe to our podcast so you can get notified every time we post a new video. Thank you and you have a great day.